Alright guys, hello and welcome back to another Built Not Bought episode video where this week we're going to be talking about all things sway bars. Now, ever since I did my suspension lift, I actually kept my sway bars standard. So it's got the standard GU Patrol sway bars in there and all I did was get extended links and they're also quick disconnects as well. So that was the only change there and the thing is an absolute boat, especially when I got that tent installed as well. Now the reason I didn't upgrade them is because I knew that I wanted to go with some of these. Now, this is some awesome new technology. Now, what they are are torsion bars. So Aurora Custom Fabrications, which is ACF, that's what these sway bars are. Now, these are sort of almost like a trophy truck setup. So what there is is a big splined axle inside this tube. And then as the diff pivots or flexes, the opposing torsion on each side of the diff, will cause that tension to make it want to come back to center. They're an absolute upgrade from the standard ones because not only that, it actually means it has more flex over slower obstacles. Because if you can imagine the way this is installed, you'll understand once it's in there, but the whole diff can drop down without any resistance. Whereas the standard one has a mount on the chassis as well as a mount on the diff. So when the diff drops down, it's getting torsion, which you don't want. You only want it when it's opposing for the sway on the road. So by having this, you can actually get a lot more flex and travel over slow obstacles, but then if you're on the road and sway left to right, that's when the torsion will start kicking in. So what we've got here, the long one at the back is for the rear, and then this short one here is for the front. Now, this is a full installation kit that I'm gonna go through. So in this video, I'm gonna show you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna install these sway bars. Now at the moment, I've got the tray off to do some bits and pieces, so it's a good opportunity to get the rear on there. So we'll start with that one first. And then the front one, once the car's back together, we'll get it on the hoist, and I reckon that's the easiest way to do the front one. Pretty much all that's supplied. We've got our linkages, our swivels, and then these are the main arms, and you can see that there's a spline on the end there. See, this is the outer tube that I was talking about. So this is just a mounting tube that needs to go onto the chassis there, and there's a couple of bushes here which go into the end of those uh, mounts to stop any water ingress. So that was all supplied in the kit which I got from my friend Mike at Mike's Shock Shop. So he is the distributor of the ACF kits and sway bars. So if you want to grab one of them, hit him up, grab one. I think the first thing to do really is just get this thing sort of mocked up sitting in the car and work out where I'm going to put it because there's a few different locations, especially on the back, where you can install these things. Okay, now looking at the mounting for the rear sway bar, what you want to do is pretty much get the end of the arm where the linkage is straight on top of the diff because that's where it's going to attach and that linkage can be adjusted to get the height right. Other than that, you want that long black arm to be fairly flat, which means I'm looking around this sort of area. Now on my particular car, I've still got the exhaust in a way, which a lot of other people wouldn't have that, but I'm seeing this small gap pretty much underneath the exhaust and just in front of the sub tank here. So straight across there, I reckon I'm gonna put it. And then I reckon I can get away with just welding a small bit of tube on the chassis here with a little step so that bracket can sort of slide into it and I'll like cut a bit of a circular shape into it so that can drop in there, tack it up, and I reckon that's the best spot for it. So we'll get it in here and see how it's gonna look. I've made these little brackets here, where is it? So I made these little brackets, so this is gonna weld onto the chassis and then I've cut this notch out so that the tube can sit in there. And then I've gone and tacked it on one end so I can sort of get it balanced on the passenger side. And then on the driver's side, I sort of marked it up where it's gonna sit and then put a mark there. So this is where the driver's side one is gonna go. So what I'm gonna do now is pretty much tack those mounts onto the chassis there. And then we can put the tube in and sit it on this rail. And that's pretty much how it's gonna sit in there. And then we can just slide the um, center torsion bar in, put this in there, and then that's sort of where it's gonna end up. And then pretty much, that's it really for the back one. That's, that's gonna be fully installed then because that means we've already done the mounts on the um, diff there. So once this is welded on, it's just a case of slotting it in, putting these little bushes through the end, and done deal. Okay. 
Okay guys, now the patrol is back on the hoist, so we've got the tray back on and got it up top now so we can start looking at the front sway bar. Now this is pretty similar to the back in the way that it works, but we've pretty much got this tube, the side arms, the actual torsion bar, and then some tabs for the diff as well. So essentially what we're gonna do under here is the uh, radiator support cross brace mount thing, I don't know, whatever it's called, but it's got this dip in here. Now we need to get rid of that, so we're pretty much gonna cut out this front cross member, slot out the holes, and then slide the new tube in there and pretty much make it a replacement support. And then when we've got that straight hole, we can run the torsion bar through the center of it and then get the arms down to the diff. Now, the mounts go onto the diff here, so I'll show you them. We've got these mounts that get welded onto the diff, so I'll clean up a little area around here and they get welded on like so. So we get them tacked on there as well as the tube, put the arms on, then there's a little more mucking around here with clearances for the front one. We need to pretty much drop the whole diff down and check the steering, because that's what you don't want to hit this thing. So we'll get it all cut out, notched out, tacked together, and then start looking at how it's gonna fit out. Right, there we go, I managed to cut out that cross member and get the new one put in now. So it's pretty much just a straight piece and that torsion bar will run through the center of it. Uh, I had a bit of trouble getting it out. I couldn't use the grinder to get all the way up, but the recip ended up chopping that last little bit off to get in there. Uh, I've also welded up these tabs. So on the diff there is linkage that's gonna connect to the sway bar. So I'm just gonna give this thing a lick of paint now where I've welded it, um, freshen it up so it doesn't rust. Same with these bits here. And then it's pretty much sorting out this um, measuring and lining up. So I'm gonna run the torsion bar through here, put the arms on, and then the diff's already drooped down so I can run the steering side to side and make sure it clears and then cut the right length on the uh, linkage rods. And then that's where it's gonna set because you wanna make sure it doesn't hit any of these arms here or pan hard, tie rod, anything like that. Anyway, I've got the sway bar installed now, and as I mentioned before, this is where we need to set our length. So at full droop, you need to turn the wheel to the right and make this sway bar, the steering arm will hit there. So I'll go full right, and then you wanna set that height. Like that, so you can see there's a bit of clearance in there. And then I need to measure from this hole down to the mounting point and cut these rods to match that. That's pretty much the last step. And then these can go in there, mount up. See, they're bloody long, but you'll chop them down, mount them up. That's pretty much sway bar installed. I've got both sides of the sway bar now, so what I want to do, I'm actually probably going to put it down on the ground first so it's at ride height and then set the distance of this one because I don't want it to be under tension when it's at ride height. So we've set it at full droop to make sure it clears. Now I'll whack it down and set this other side and that's pretty much it. All right, I don't know if you can see, but I'll pretty much put it down now and this does need to be shortened quite a bit. So I'll just make that adjustment and we should be looking good. All right, so it's been about, I'd say four to five months now since I've had these sway bars in. Oh my God. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit sick at the moment, but that's fine. So I just wanna give a quick little review of sort of what I've experienced the last few months. Now, as soon as I put them in, I noticed a massive change on road driving. So it's definitely a lot more stable on road. Now with the amount of weight I've got in the back and the rooftop tent, the only sort of criticism I had was um, the rear could be a little bit tighter. 
Now, this was after I did a big trip across Australia. I'd done the trip from WA to Sydney for the full drive shows. So I went, did a lot of Ks on highway, and it was really tight, really good around town as well. And with the trailer on the back, I found it really stable. Um, now, luckily enough, the guy, Dave from ACF, who actually builds these sway bars, is um, based down in Melbourne. Now, that was a, um, a state that I was heading to on my little trip anyway. So I dropped in to see him, um, and he basically, what he did was drilled a couple of holes just in front of where the original holes are on the rear sway bar. And what that does is actually give it less um, distance of torsion. If you can kind of work out the maths and see that by having a, a smaller cantilever, it actually creates more tension in the bar. So bringing that other bolt hole in made it a lot stiffer in the rear and that kind of fixed the issue. It sort of balanced the front to rear now. You could sort of feel it a little bit screwy in the rear, but that's really awesome to know that you can kind of adjust it doing those kind of things. So I'm really, overall I'm really happy with the setup on the road and that's sort of what, what I wanted to get out of it. Now off-road driving, I haven't done a whole bunch of, so stay tuned um, for some future videos of proper off-road driving. Now this thing hasn't been built or designed for flex. Everyone knows that it's got limiting straps in the rear, so they're gonna come into play before the um, sway bar does anything anyway. Front might may, may be a little different, but generally the shock will um, fully extend or bottom out um, on the bump stops before the sway bar kind of comes into play as well. But I will try and get some shots um, flexing. No doubt you'll see it off-road in some future episodes and see how it goes there. But for me, I really wanted that torsion set up for the stiff um, feel on road and that's what we've achieved here. So as I said earlier, these are gonna start coming out. I'm pretty sure the guys are ready to start selling them. So hit up Mike's Shock Shop um, or Dave from ACF if you wanna get yourself a set for your patrol. Um, bit of R&D on this one. Uh, so I've given them my feedback and basically we'll see how they go from there. But really an awesome upgrade from the standard sway bar setup that you'll find on these Nissan patrols. And of course guys, going with tradition, I do have another Christmas special pack coming up. For the last two years we've done that and this year is no, this year? This year is no different. So we've got a Phil Not Bought singlet, the stubby holder and a windscreen banner pack all bundled up for 60 bucks. So that's an awesome savings. Um, get it in time for Christmas. It's coming up, get the kids a prezi or yourself. Of course, all the money that comes from that website gets reinvested back into the channel. So it's really what helps keep this thing going. And it's really what's made the channel keep going because of your guys' support in the last couple of years. So I want to put a big thanks out to you guys for that, for continuing to purchase that stuff on the website, coming to the shows, getting involved with Show Your Dirt, all those kind of things. And of course, Patreon as well, which is still ticking over nicely. If you don't know what that's all about, there's a link. It's probably the first link in the description down below. Check out Patreon. It's where all the behind the scenes um, and there's extra activities in there, involvement that you guys can have. We've actually got a trip coming up very soon for the Patreon guys in WA. So you get a chance to come along on a trip with me. It's going to be an overnight and go wheeling as well. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Keep an eye out for that off-road driving and um, I'll see you there. Peace. I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here and I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe.